We feel so fortunate. Uh, we got a little taste of a photo of these guys today during Dr. Kamage's presentation. We have Heidi and Pierre Onda, who are the founders of the White Ribbon Project. Um, so we're so excited. I, I want to say I'm, that you all had sent me, or a few of you had sent me requests for ribbons. Some of you aren't, didn't come. So I ended up telling Heidi, I'm just going to go with uh, the honor system. I know you know who you are if you asked for one. Please go to Heidi and Pierre after, and uh, they will provide you with a white ribbon. And they also brought some extras. I think almost all have been signed for doc by Dr. Kamage and other doctors now that everybody's here. So I will leave it to you guys. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're hungry as well, so we'll try to get through this quickly. Uh, so good afternoon, and, and Heidi, aka MacGyver, and I are, are very honored to be here. And your group definitely provides us with a great deal of uh, inspiration. And many of you are already familiar with the White Ribbon Project, which is now officially a 501c3 organization, albeit, you know, potluck stage. But um, but we're going to focus more on how people are using their ribbons uh, to promote lung cancer awareness and advocacy. Uh, your community, the Al community, is a great example of what a committed group of people can accomplish. And like you, we're, we're seeking a path to better outcomes for people living with lung cancer. We also believe there's strength and value in including the voices and commitment of people with all stages and types of lung cancer, regardless of smoking history. Um, in addition, people without lung cancer, caregivers, friends, researchers, clinicians, and industry uh, can all uh, join a common cause. So this is us. Pierre and I are high school sweethearts, married 36 years, and this is our family. And in October of 2018, like many of you, um, we were blindsided by my stage 3A lung cancer diagnosis, inoperable given a terminal prognosis of four to six months, no mutations detected, no PDL one I was um, very grateful to be able to receive something, um, which was cisplatin and pemetrexid, and then a year of a new immunotherapy that had just been um, approved about a month prior to my diagnosis. So here I am almost four years later. So the White Ribbon Project was born out of my frustration over the lack of planning and action on the part of cancer centers across the country to do anything for Lung Cancer Awareness Month. The number one cancer killer gets nothing, not acceptable. This made me furious and I asked Pierre to make me a big white ribbon out of wood so I could scream from my front door to my community that I had lung cancer and I wasn't ashamed of it. I could take action on my property and did not need permission to do so. By the way, I am a health educator and a fitness trainer at a clean life. Pierre is a primary care doctor, felt that if um, we didn't know I could be susceptible to lung cancer, then people in the general population wouldn't know either. And we needed to teach them. So what are some ways that people have been using the ribbons? They've been building them. Look at Dr. Carbone here. He is an amazing woods craftsman and an amazing thoracic oncologist. So this is a hero because not only does he, you know, stay on top of everything for treating lung cancer patients, but he is a physician advocate. Whoops. How do I go back? And then we want to get those ribbons to the cancer centers. And here's a way that we do that. We come with pre-painted ribbons and we put them out and we have patients and the medical community, the staff sign these ribbons and give them to patients. We engage with the medical community everywhere. So here is a more formal presentation of the ribbons with Dr. Ross Kamage and Dr. Richard Schulich, the director of the cancer center at CU and more thoracic oncology team members as well as survivors and caregivers. And Dr. Kamage was so kind as to let me come by when he signed all of these ribbons. So everything is already signed by Dr. Kamage and there's plenty of other heroes and survivors to um, keep doing that. So here we have an opportunity to meet people where they are in the waiting room. Um, connecting them to the lung cancer community, other advocacy organizations, the organizations and community resources right away. Here's a license plate. This one's out of Georgia. 
I wasn't successful in finding one from another state. Well, let's get on it. Okay. We're all from different states. Let's do it. I don't know that it's going to be easy or difficult, but we don't know unless we try. That would raise a lot of awareness and money. Okay. So let's talk about Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Start talking to your cancer centers. Your physicians can help you advocate as well to get things done in a big way. So we can scream, you know, that entire month and throughout the year. So this is Charlotte, North Carolina. I've heard that white lights don't show up real well. Well, I disagree. Look at that. They challenged um, the city of Charlotte's skyscrapers to light up in November. Um, Sky Ridge is where I had my radiation treatments. All I did was ask, and this is a projection technology. I can talk to you um, outside of this um, offline. We'll be here all day. Um, very simple to project that. They projected that every day of the month last November, and right now they have it shining this weekend for all of us, and we'll continue through Monday evening, which is August 1st, World Lung Cancer Day. I suggest a field trip tonight after sundown. Let's get out there. Let's take it a magnificent picture and spread it around. Proclamations turn out to be pretty simple to get done. Approach your mayors with an email. There's usually a form on these websites and the um, whereas language, there's templates or people from the White Ribbon Project are happy to help you find that, those resources. We have you know, legislation as well. Look at Dr. Carbone with the governor and Annie who advocated hard for radon le legislation. And I know Dr. Carbone's gonna help us get a ribbon to the governor. So again, another example of physician advocacy this is Dr. Michael Gieske, who is the lung cancer screening director at um, St. Elizabeth's Healthcare in Kentucky. He is a primary care physician. He decided to jump in with both feet this year into advocacy. And now look who has these ribbons. We can keep going further. And just on um, July 15th, Governor Bashir signed into law um, allocating it's House Bill 219 from Kentucky to allocate millions of dollars to lung cancer um, screening and research. We believe um, it's important to engage with primary care physicians. Uh, that, that was my field. And, you know, they really are the key players in uh, efforts to improve lung cancer screening rates. And they also need to understand that lung cancer can occur in people without a history of smoking. Now, we clearly understand that screening doesn't help people already diagnosed with a disease, but no one deserves to get lung cancer. And pushing for more effective and sophisticated screening technology will eventually lead to broader eligibility criteria. And that potentially could include people exposed to radon, people with family histories of lung cancer, and even perhaps one day universal screening, regardless of smoking history. And perhaps one day, uh, the majority of out positive lung cancer patients will be diagnosed at much earlier stages because of advances in screening. Uh, this is me handing off my white ribbon to my primary care team and colleague who she herself was diagnosed with lung cancer about 10 years ago, and they've all committed to continue to promote lung cancer awareness, advocacy, and screening within uh, our primary care clinic. Travel affords, travel affords great opportunities to start conversations. All of you who take ribbons today, think about carrying it in your tote bag. Tails up, you can hold the handles easily. This starts conversations. We have had people um, approach other advocates with these ribbons and actually disclose that they had lung cancer and now they were finding the community. I was able to pack 40 ribbons in each of those suitcases, plus that tote bag had 20. And I'll tell you more about where those ended up soon. But here we have, you know, our advocate, Bonnie um, Ulrich, who, you know, made so much attention about this ribbon as they walked on that the pilots were very curious about this and started conversations. We're in 30 countries right now. That's about to explode. It's exploding because of this collaborative build that we had with the IASLC, the Colorado Cancer Coalition, survivors, caregivers, Dr. Gieske from Kentucky and um, Chris Draft and youth. Look at the youth in there in that middle picture from the American Lung Cancer Screening Initiative. These ribbons, I took a hundred of them to Boston where they completed painting and labeling and signing. They are going to go to Vienna. And we have a German label, which we'll show you in a second. But if you're interested in having your story 
in a podcast. We want those stories. So please take down that email address or I can get it to you later um, to get on their list for a podcast. So four um, languages already. Now the fifth is in German and we just got approved for Chinese and Japanese last night. So this is um, a big shout out to Canada and Jill Hammer Wilson for her tireless advocacy as our international liaison and all she continues to do in the science world. She is continually asked to represent at um, conferences. There's a shot here in ASCO. And we're also very, very grateful for AstraZeneca hosting a build in Canada and Pfizer hosting a build in New York. We have a lot of great team members here. <laughs> Opportunities for huge public attention and awareness have been and continue to be abundant, welcoming and supportive. The NFL has been on board for over a decade thanks to Chris Draft and his tremendous advocacy, but it is up to us to show up and be visible and vocal. I often ask myself that if Pierre and I, people trained in prevention, did not know that I could be at risk for lung cancer, why would the general public know that? They only know what we have all been taught. We didn't learn until we were diagnosed, like many of you, that anyone with lungs could get lung cancer. These are teachable moments and people have been grateful for the information and want to learn more. The public is not against us. In fact, many understand the need to advocate with us so this doesn't happen to them. We can grow this community. And the opportunities are limitless. Dr. Gieske took this to the base camp of Mount Everest. Chris just cut back from Egypt. We define the limits and they're limitless. This is my friend, Bonnie. Bonnie and I were put together, matched through the GoTo Foundation as phone buddies because we shared the same diagnosis and treatment plan. Stage 3A, non-operable, um, cisplatin, pemetrexid, and then on to a year of Dervalumab. The difference between us was that I didn't have a smoking history and Bonnie did. What I loved about Bonnie I didn't even ask about her smoking history till I knew her a little longer in the relationship that look at this photo of her with her grandchildren, just such a warm, kind, generous heart. And she did have this smoking history and she was, you know, very authentic about that. And she wanted to stand up and have other people with smoking history stand up with her because again, this is the majority of our community. Those numbers are just catastrophically large. So welcoming everyone to say lung cancer awareness is important for all the reasons you're all here today and all the reasons that we're here today, we want better outcomes. So I wanna show you this little video and then I have one more slide. You may recognize some faces. What I love about this picture is that this was the end. We were already done. You know, I was about to leave and it happened naturally. I, I didn't stage it, nothing. It was a beautiful moment. So I captured that. And I think that was my favorite picture. My name is Paul Ninsen and I'm a photographer. You know, my grandparents were traditional rulers from Ghana. My grandparents used to tell me stories when I was a kid. That's a way of us passing history from one generation to the other. So when I grew up, I wanted to express these stories. I wanted to tell these stories in a better way. That's when I found photography. And I love to photograph portraits, to be able to get emotions out of someone and the state of the person is very powerful. So mostly when I'm photographing, I don't consider myself as a photographer. 
I'm a human being. Portrait of Lung Cancer is one of my favorite projects I've ever done to destigmatize the perception about lung cancer. Because as long as you have lungs, you can get lung cancer. They deserve our love, our compassion, and everything. People living with lung cancer are the same as all of us. And in the pictures, that is the point. Daniel Hagen, the daughter, Bonnie standing in front of her house. Tina at the backyard. Nadi in Atlanta. Bonnie in San Francisco. Serena in California. Heidi, a fitness instructor. Steve preparing for what will happen next. They are all normal people. What I hope people take away from these portraits is that they see human beings. They'll see strength. They see love. And I hope is my greatest prayer that there'll be a cure for lung cancer. There'll be a cure for cancer in general. If there's one thing I wish I had was uh, superpowers to be able to take away people's pain and suffering. But the real power is giving somebody the chance to tell his or her story. So, three people in that video had smoking histories. Who were they? Well, does it matter? But letting you know that we lost Bonnie in May. And Steve died earlier in the year. I did not know Steve. This is real. We're real people. We all matter. So I believe we can be the greatest team ever if we welcome all stories and stand together. We can control the message and the strength of the advocacy. It is truly up to us. We are stronger together. Let's keep going. We can do this. Thank you.